Did you know that rough housing with your kids isn't just about burning off energy? It's actually a powerful way to build their confidence, character, and leadership skills. When John Lovell, the author of The Warrior Poet Way, talked about the encouraging of his kids to pretend like they're in battle, it wasn't just for fun. It was training them for life. Today, I'm going to show you how letting your kids roughhouse can transform them into resilient leaders and why you should embrace it, not avoid it. More importantly, how to convince your wife that it's okay. Here's five tips for how and why you should roughhouse with your kids. Let's get straight to it. Tip number one, why does roughhousing actually matter anyway? Well, when you're talking about specifically roughhousing in particular, we always think about how do our kids act in civilized society when they are playing war games, when they're out grabbing a stick and shooting at their friends. We often try to tamp that down because we know that it's not the thing they should be doing and it's taboo. But it really does cause some good, important learning excursions for those kiddos. So dads oftentimes avoid rough housings because they seem that the aggression will lead to chaos or fear of injuries or loss of control. But most importantly, let's just admit it, dad, is because mom doesn't want them to rough house and you feel like you need to listen to mom and you need to make sure to facilitate nice, good, angelic little children. But if you've got boys, like I've got boys, I have an eight and a six-year-old, they are crazy all the time and all they want to do is rough house with dad. So how do I facilitate that? How do I enable that? And then how do I work through the challenges that mom may have as a result of that? We're going to continue to dive deeply into that. But in reality, rough housing teaches crucial life skills. It builds physical confidence, resilience, and it helps us set some boundaries with your little boys and how they approach the other things in life in particular. It teaches them how to balance between strength and how to balance between control. John Lovell talks about this in particular when he's talking about his two little boys and how they would go at him with reckless abandon. His little kiddo would just charge straight at him, screaming as much as possible, not even concerned about the fact that John, being a ranger, could knock him onto the floor nice and easy. But they would focus on that. The little kiddo would just go straight at him. But his older kid started to craftily think about what he was going to do, how he was going to do it, and how he was going to take advantage and jump off a couch and jump onto John so he could take his dad down. All of those things, those little learning between balance, strength, and cunning are the things that are going to help to build that character in your kiddo in particular. So that's the first tip, but let's dive into the second component of how rough housing builds leadership this is the core benefit with our kiddos when we start to dive into this deeper. So how does rough housing teach leadership? Well, first and foremost, it forces kids to manage their emotions and think quickly during their play. Oftentimes, especially if you're rough housing with dad, or more importantly, if they're rough housing with other kids, things can escalate out of control really quickly. And it's very tempting for you and I as dads to jump in and break up things when you see that they're starting to escalate out. But that's the time where you want to sit back, take a breath, and watch your kiddos and see how they engage and how they act as it relates to that play that's getting out of hand with the other kiddos. Because if they can manage their emotions, they can think quickly, they can start to have that ability to make decisions during other stressful times as they're beginning to grow up. Secondly, it teaches assertiveness. Kids learn when to push and when to pull back. So if they are being assertive, trying to push forward with something specifically while they're roughhousing and playing, and then something else comes into the picture, like mom walks in the door and says, I need you guys to wash your hands and get ready for lunch. That's when they can learn how to push and pull back. And when they continue to push and push and push, like I'm sure you and I deal with all the time, that is where they can start to appreciate, okay, I've gotten to this point. Now I need to go from warrior to, as John says, poet, and I need to wash my hands and I need to get ready for lunch. So those are the things that it teaches, the inflection points and in how that they can approach those typical situations. And then finally, it instills decision-making and the importance of protecting others. I think this is one of the most important parts, and John speaks about this in particular in his book, The Warrior Poet Way, about how men 
protect those around him. And this is something that has really started to fall by the wayside, especially in 2024 when I'm recording this video, because we have a generation of men who are being taught to not be uh, masculine, to not provide and show their bravado, and to be more effeminate and sit down and color when they should be outside playing, roughhousing, and getting into things. We need men, we need boys who turn into men who are willing to protect their families and to protect their society. And in order to do that, we need to foster at a young age the different balance between being physical and being that lover as well as the fighter. So you really gotta do both. And you can only do that by allowing them to have some of that fun and engage in those activities as they're moving forward. You know, I think of a story just this past weekend that I had with our kiddos. It was nice and hot. We live here in Colorado. It's late September and it's starting to cool down at night, but the pool's closed and we just wanted to get out and have a lot of fun. So let's have an epic water balloon fight for the end of the summer season and we went all out. As I said, I've got two boys, but I also have a girl who's three years old and she is the cutest little thing in the world, but she also wants to get rough and tumble with her brothers. So it was me and Allegra versus my two boys and we went at it. They went out and we've got those cool little pre-fillable water balloons, right? You stick them on the hose and you can fill them up. We ended up filling, gosh, I think we had at least 150 balloons. And the boys, thinking about this and planning for it throughout the entire day got crafty. So we have an enclosed trampoline. So Callan, our younger boy, stayed in there and he was the armorer. He was able to facilitate getting Bromley all of the balloons that he needed. And the two of them worked together to chase me around the yard the entire afternoon. We got absolutely soaking wet. The cool thing was, as I would let them hit me, and then finally I would turn around and I would hit them back, they would start to regroup. They would start to work together, which is very rare for these two boys. They always like to fight against one another, but now when they're fighting a unified battle plan that is dad and a little bit of Allegra, they started working together, thinking clearly and making the plan about how they can facilitate getting me and getting me more wet. And it was really fun to watch in the moment them thinking about how they can do that. And then having Allegra, of course, rearm me and of course, I had to take them out a number of different times. Those water balloons hurt, but it's always fun. And the kiddos learn how to deal with some of the pain, which is another component that I'm going to talk about in another video. Your kids need to deal with pain and they need to feel the pain so that they can learn how to live and push through it. But that story was so much fun and it just really showcased, all right, I'm going to go all out. We're going to have the ultimate water balloon war and it really turned out well, and I think they learned some good life lessons as a result of it. That brings us into number three, building character and courage through play. This is something that's so darn important. And really when we talk about this, we talk about how rough housing teaches resilience and dealing with failure. Oftentimes when Callan, my littlest boy, is running after me and I pick him up and I toss him on the bed, or I'm getting a little tired of things and I smack him a little bit harder just so I can show him that I am the actual boss, it hurts him a little bit, at least in his head, right? I don't actually injure him. But those type of things, when your kids get knocked down, they learn how to get back up. When I was throwing one of the water balloons the other day, I got Callan right in the back of the head and it was probably a little hard. He immediately broke down into tears. But when we talked through the situation and I looked at him and I made sure there was no blood, He's able to take a breath. He's able to get back up into the game and get back into the fight because he has the ability to get knocked down and get right back up knowing that there's something bigger and better to do when it comes to that water balloon fight. The other component of this is it's a safe space to experience failure and more importantly, recovery. If you can have that rough house time with your sons, really get into it with them, let them experience that failure show them how you can knock them down and be a little bit uh, more strong than they are, obviously, so that they can see, all right, these are the challenges that I face. I failed at this point. How do I get up? How do I recover? How do I move forward? So those are some of the fun things that they can absolutely do. Second component of this is courage and confidence grow with testing their limits. Playtime offers chances to win and lose in very low stakes scenarios. And this fosters courage to face challenges. 
if your kiddos are at school and they're running at the playground or if they're in gym class and they're trying to run a race, those type of things will give them an opportunity to win and to lose. If you foster the feeling of loss with them at home in those low stake environments, it will help to build the courage for them to face those challenges when you're not around. And as these seasons of life continue to grow, I think that's the most important thing for you and me, right? We want to make sure that when we are not there, they have the courage to face those challenges and to really push forward with them in particular. And then finally, on this building character and courage to play, the role of roughhousing and emotional regulation is absolutely critical from that perspective, right? So we can help our kids learn the limits of emotions and physical reactions how they have fun without losing control is extremely important. All of our kids, they can have temper tantrums, especially if they're on the younger age. When they have that temper tantrum, when they lose control of their emotions and their physical capabilities, these are the opportunities when you are doing that roughhousing to catch them in that moment and guide them to what they need to do when they are engaged with their friends at school or other places. This is another really good point because I'm talking with my kindergartner right now, Callan, again, who's six years old. He's just very easily getting into the point with kindergarten where he has so much energy, so much zest for life, and he gets really worked up and carried away with things. But now we're in a situation where he's in 30, kids in his kindergarten class half of them or more are girls and now i'm starting to instill into him the value of when a girl says stop playing with me or stop roughhousing he needs to stop immediately he needs to learn how to have fun without losing control because these are some of the most important lessons they can learn at this young age so that they can treat women better when they get older so something to really keep in mind and really embrace finally four practical tips Let's get into some tactics. When we're doing the roughhousing, what are some of the practical tips that we want to jump into with our kiddos when we're having these fun times with them? First, embrace it and don't suppress the rough play. I know it's something that you really um, have to engage and appreciate. I feel you, Dad. When you and I get home from a long day at work, whether you're working from home or whether you're at an office, sometimes you just want to sit back, take a breath, have a beer and just relax and not have to deal with your kids. But your kids are so excited to see you and especially those boys. The best way for them to show their affection to you is by roughhousing. And I know that's the way that I absolutely do it with my kids. I don't remember my father roughhousing with me very much and I definitely don't remember him hugging me very much. My father was a hero to me. I'm gonna have another video talking about him and how he left us too soon. But that's one of the things that I missed in my life. I didn't have the affection with my father as much as I think that I should have. So I've really umped the ante with my kiddos now by embracing that play. Every night, especially with Cal and my little kiddo, I go really hard on the roughhousing right before bed. My wife absolutely hates it. She can't understand why I would be roughhousing with a child before they need to go to bed. But for me, that's the day where, or the time of day where we solidify the lessons we've learned, the experiences we've had, the discussions we've had throughout the day. And it feels to me like we basically close out the day by embracing each other and becoming much more close by embracing, not suppressing that roughhouse time that we have. So if I haven't been able to roughhouse with Callan throughout the day, you're darn sure I'm gonna be picking him up and throwing him from the ceiling all the way down onto the bed and body slamming him because he absolutely loves it. We were just at uh, Legoland last week and poor Callan was so excited to play the Ninja Go uh, ride while he was out there. And he's been doing the Ninja Go thing every single day. So he throws a pill at me every single night. I immediately catch it and then I belt him with that thing. But every once in a while, I let him do the dodge so he can have his ninja skills and we can embrace the zest for life that he has from that perspective. So embrace it, don't suppress it. Finally, and secondly, I guess, uh, create leadership moments during play. So this is a cool opportunity for you to be able to let them lead the game sometimes Give them the chance to make the rules and guide the direction of play. This is especially important when we were talking about our um, water balloon fight the other day. I told them, go fill it up, set up the rules of the game, let me know where I need to be, and then I'll beat them. And they were able to facilitate that whole process, working as leaders together so that they could learn the rules of that game. Finally, from this point, from practical tips, use this play as a teaching moment. After playtime, ask them. 
what did you learn? What would you have done differently? Would you have been more strong? Would you have been more smart? Let them talk through and replay in their mind how that play went, and then ask them what did they like about leading the battle, especially because Bromley and Callan typically take the leadership role. The older kid takes the leadership role, but sometimes I let Callan do the leadership, or it's just him and I. So those are the kind of things where you can have them reflect on that playtime, the roughhousing and the activity, and we'll, we'll move forward from there. One final point from uh, using this as a, as a teaching moment is all of our kids, they're going to play cops and robbers, they're going to play guns and things like that. And that's one place where I really try to embrace and showcase to them the universal laws of gun safety. And this is something that I absolutely talk about quite a bit because we do practice um, our Second Amendment rights here in the Fields household. So I want them to have a very appreci good appreciation, even with Nerf guns at an early age, of those four universal firearm safety rules. I've got a couple of other videos that talk specifically about that, but in a nutshell, in case you aren't aware, rule number one, treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Number two, always keep the muzzle pointed in a safe direction so you're not flagging anybody. Number three, keep your finger off that trigger until you're ready to shoot. And then finally, know your target and what's beyond it and make sure it's not anything that you don't want to destroy. And I have our kids know those universal fire up safety rules even if they have a stick in their hand, right? Because that is how they are going to learn when they have that eventually in their hand, what to do right and what to do wrong. And then finally, here's where it really meets the road. The potential pushback from either other dads that you might see that might be a little bit more effeminate, or more importantly, your spouse, your wife. When she says, don't let them roughhouse, what are you going to do in order to help to address some of those common concerns? So from my perspective, some may worry about injuries or aggression, but roughhousing, from my perspective, when it's done right, it helps develop self-regulation not chaos. So that's what you can start to um, discuss with some of the people that you um, may you know, engage with that say, oh my gosh, your kids are so rough. Yeah, well, I'm helping them to develop some of that self-regulation and it looks chaotic now, but we're gonna work through that as we move forward in particular. And then talk about how this play, when moderated, builds respect for limits and it teaches how to handle conflict with care. And this is one of those things that are so important, right? Because your kids are gonna be away from you a lot of time, especially if they're at school. We have our kids in a charter school, but they're going to have conflict. And I want them to have experienced the conflict with me so that they can do a better job about what they are going to do when they see that conflict when I'm not around. And this is something from you know my wife's perspective in particular, talking to them about that. Are I gonna embrace this rough housing? I'm going to play with my kiddos in the evening because these are the kind of lessons I'm trying to instill in them. And if I'm at work all day and we've had dinner and this is the only time I can try to instill some of these lessons, I think this is a good opportunity for me to do so. So something to think about from that perspective. And then finally, when you're talking to mom, when you're talking to your wife, talk about, at least from my perspective, how effeminate, I've said it a couple times, our society is trying to make our boys. If we want boys to grow up to protect their family, to retain some of that aggression so they can point it in the right direction, we need to foster that now because when they get into the public schooling system in particular, that's going to be beat out of them and not in the metaphorical sense. They will not be able to show that aggression because they're going to be sat in a desk all day long. So from my perspective, my wife and I agree from a value perspective there, and that's why she feels more comfortable with us playing those roughhousing games, those war games, because we're teaching them how to be boys and men as a result of that. So something to think about, and definitely curious as we're talking about this, what's your take? Do you allow your kids to roughhouse and get a little bit out of hand, or do you stop them from doing so right away? What recommendations do you have in particular for how to do this? And if you like this kind of information, definitely subscribe. I've got tons of great content for dads like you and me as we move forward in life, raising boys, raising daughters in particular. I've got lots of stuff coming up on daughters as well. So let me know what you think, put your comments below. And if you like John Lovell and you like his information, check this video right here. This talks all about what John Lovell does from a father perspective and the father wound that you carry. You're absolutely gonna love it. 
Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're having a good one. Talk to you soon. Appreciate it.